Okay, in this video we're going to use sum, sum, right, to product formulas. We're going to turn this into a product so we can help solve this equation easily. This first equation is in the interval 0 to 2 pi. The second one is just going to be a general solution. So we're going to have the n pi business that comes from lesson 5.3. If you're looking for videos on that, go to lesson 5.3 where I discuss how to, to really get the technical answer for this because we've been doing this in our class so far all the time. Uh, if you're in my class, you should know how to do that already. So, here's what we're going to do. I see that I have a sine plus a sine. That makes me think of this formula right here. I'm going to turn a sum into a product, and that's going to make it easier to solve. So I'm going to identify u and v. Looks like u is going to be 5x, and v is going to be 3x. That means I can rewrite this then as 2 times the sine of 5x plus 3x all over 2 times the cosine of 5x minus 3x all over 2. And that is equal to 0, right? That comes from the sum to product formulas. So now I need to simplify the stuff inside the parentheses. That's the 2 times the sine of 8x over 2, which is just 4x, times the cosine of 2x over 2, which is just x, and that's equal to 0. So now, the reason that I do this is because it makes it very simple. Either the sine of 4x is equal to 0, right? Because that would give me 2 times 0 times something. Or, the second thing that can happen is the cosine of x can be equal to 0, because that would give me 2 times something times 0. So, I branch off into two equations. From here, we go back to lesson 5.3. We try to talk about how to solve this. When is the sine 0? Well, it turns out that that happens when the y coordinate on the unit circle is equal to zero, right? Done a lot of these lately. This is the y coordinate on the unit circle. Where do I have an up and down value of zero? Well, this is one. This is negative one, right in the middle. Zero and pi. Those are my two possible values. But that didn't solve for x, that solved for 4x. So if I look, if I gave a general solution, if it wasn't zero to two pi, you would say it's 0 plus, and because these form a straight line, you would say 0 plus n pi, right? There's your general solution. So that means that if I'm going to solve for x, I need to divide everything by 4. And there's really no reason to write this, right? You wouldn't ever write 0 plus something. So really, x is equal to n pi over 4. We're going to come back and visit that in just a second. There's the general solution for the first part. I'm not done yet. I'm not done. So you really don't need to circle it. I'm just highlighting it now for you. For you. Uh, I know that cosine is directly related to the x-coordinate. So if I'm talking x-coordinates, this is 1. This is negative 1. That means it's going to be right in the middle, right? It's going to be 90 and 270. So if I was doing a general solution here, I would say that x is equal to pi over 2, 90 degrees, plus n pi. That's the general solution. Now, that being the case, if this was the second problem, if it didn't give me an interval, I have my two answers. I'm done here. Because it says an interval, I need to come up with the specific values, the specific angles that meet those requirements being between 0 and 2 pi. This one's easy because it's pi over 2 and 3 pi over 2, right? If n is 0, it's just this. If n is 1, it's pi over 2 plus another 2 halves, right? 1 half plus 2 halves is 3 halves. There's the 270 we're looking for. So two of my solutions are going to be pi over 2 and 3 pi over 2. This one on the left, though, is a little bit trickier because if n is 0, that means I have pi over 4. If n is 1, that means I have 1 pi over 4. Excuse me. I need to do a 0. 0 pi over 4, 1 pi over 4, 2 over 4 would be 1 half. 3 pi over 4 is a solution. 4 pi over 4 is a solution. Oh, well, that's just pi. I don't need to write that out, right? 5 pi over 4 is the solution. 6 pi over 4, 6 fourths is 3 halves. I've already got it listed. 7 pi over 4 is the solution. And 8 pi over 4 would be 2 pi because this is a parenthesis here. It's not allowed. So that means that my solutions are here. There are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 solutions to that problem. 8 different angles we can put in. Really what happened is this. Because of the 4x, that means you have to say 0 and pi, but then you have to go around 4 times. 
in order to get up to 2 pi total because we're really dividing by 4 in the end. So 0 pi, 2 pi, 3 pi, 4 pi, 5 pi, 6 pi, 7 pi. We have to take into account that when we divide those by 4, 7 pi over 4 is now a solution because that's less than 2, isn't it? That's probably pretty confusing. You're going to find out that this one's a lot easier. You'll think this one's a lot easier. And when we're in class, we'll talk probably more about these examples because I'll need to help you out with them. So let's go through and let's do this example. Let's do it quickly. U is going to be 4x and V is going to be 2x. Sine minus sine is the second formula down in the sheet. It's this one right here. You can pause while you're writing it down, or if you get the formula sheet in front of you, you can go ahead and, uh, and move it off to the side. But here's what we're going to do. It's going to be rewritten then as 2 times the cosine of 4x plus 2x all over 2 times the, the, let's see, the sine of 4x minus 2x all over 2, u minus v all over 2. So I need to simplify this. Whoops, do that here. That's equal to 0. That means that 2 cosine of, let's see, that's 4x plus 2x is 6x. 6x over 2 is 3x. This is going to be sine of 4x minus 2x is 2x. 2x over 2 is which 1x. So here's what I have that I need to solve. That means I can go a couple of ways. Either the cosine of 3x is equal to 0, or the sine of x is equal to 0. Over here, this is directly related to the y coordinate on the unit circle. That means 0 and pi are two solutions. Because this is a y coordinate of 1, here's a y coordinate of negative 1, right? So I'm talking right in the middle. 0 and 180. Over here, cosine of 3x. I know cosine is directly related to the x coordinate. That means that I have two solutions, pi over 2 and 3 pi over 2, but I got to make adjustments because that's 3x now, right? So general solution would be pi over 2 plus n pi. That would be 3x. Oops, equals. There's my general solution, pi over 2 plus increments of 180 degrees. That means if I divide everything by 3, that means x is going to be pi over 6 plus n pi over 3. I need to try values of n until I get up above 2 pi. Once I hit 2 pi, then I can stop, right? Oh, no, 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 never mind. I'm sorry. We're done. Because this isn't in the interval, that means I've already got my solution. You've got pi over 6 plus n pi over 3. And over from this side, that translates to x is pi over 2 plus n pi. 180 degree increments. Hey, how about that? We're actually done with this problem. That turns out to be a little bit easier, doesn't it? And there's how you solve a trigonometric equation using summed to product formulas. By far, the most difficult problem that you'll have in this section.